Hello and welcome to the Cat Knits podcast. This is a monthly podcast where I chat about all the things that I've been up to with knitting. So I'm excited about today's podcast because I've got a couple announcements uh, that I'll get to as we chat. It's currently Easter weekend, so happy Easter. I uh, hope you had a great Easter with your family and were able to kind of get together. Today I am wearing a sweater that was actually gifted to me. So this was knit by my mother-in-law and it is super cozy. The f- yarn itself is very soft. It is a Jupiter Moon Farm yarn. It's called Moonshine. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it's got a little bit of silk in it, uh, which I think makes it kind of a little bit shinier and soft. It's got this awesome, thick, huge, warm, cozy collar. And the yarn isn't itchy, so I can't feel it uh, itching at all. I've worn this multiple times. Although, now that I've just said that, I can kind of feel it itching. So as long as you don't talk about it being itchy, it won't be itchy. It, it, it honestly isn't an itchy uh, fabric or wool. And this pattern is, a Brooklyn, is by Brooklyn Tweed, and I think it's called the Mayor Seamless Pullover. As usual, I'll include show notes, and I'll have links to all the things that I chat about below. Uh, the only modification that I believe she made was... There's a little bit of texture around the shoulders. So I think these typically is like a garter stitch or maybe like pearl. And uh, we kind of chatted about it and we agreed that we just prefer the regular stockinette. And I can't believe it, but it completely fits, which is amazing because I don't, she didn't, I think I tried it on about halfway, but I don't think I tried on like the sleeves or the length and I love both of it. It's got positive ease, which is something that I uh, really like in sweaters. I like to feel kind of wrapped up and cozy. And this color, so I recently discovered, I think red is actually um, flattering for my skin tone, which I never really thought of. Uh, A couple years ago, my mom gifted me a red sweater. And after that, I've just kind of fallen in love with red. Although this is only my second red thing. Clearly, I need to do a little more shopping. Uh, but yeah, this is, it's wonderful. And it's so very sweet uh, that she knit this for me. So thank you very much. It's also kind of the perfect time of year to be wearing sweaters without jackets, which is to me just prime. So hopefully it just stays that kind of cool, but not raining in Vancouver, which we're kind of known for rain. Okay, so the first kind of thing I think I'll chat about is these hats so the this is called the pacific crest hat and guess what it's my first pattern that i've designed so this is a ribbed hat and this is the smallest size which is baby and then this is the largest size which is an adult large i have a slightly larger head so this fits me And I wanted it to have like a pretty thick brim. And then I like hats that uh, don't have extra space at the uh, top of the head. Of course, you could probably um, just extend this brim part if you're someone who kind of likes the more that look where it kind of like sticks up a little bit. I don't know how ridiculous I look right now, but oops. The, one of the inspirations for this hat is using up multiple bits of scrap yarn. So this hat was knit holding together a DK and a fingering, and then this hat is knit together holding three fingerings. And then also there's a bit of, you actually, there's contrast colors that you alternate uh, throughout the hat. And that kind of allows just kind of like a little bit of pop if you were to alternate something that's brighter. So in this hat, I ended up alternating Um, It's like a very bright white blue and it's got little bits of orange in it and it's just kind of, it's not too much because it is quite a contrast to the pinks. I absolutely love the colors and how this hat turned out and because it is a ribbed hat, it does have, it's quite a little negative ease and then it's very um, stretchy or flexible. I, I don't know what the word is. And as you can see with the decreases, they kind of create this beautiful swirl pattern. 
This hat was actually knit using leftover, well, actually both of them are all knit using leftover bits and bobs of yarn, but I was pretty excited because this is how much leftover yarn I now have uh, in this one color that was used in this hat. And this is actually all the leftover yarn, so I was able to shrink my stash, which is always great. Uh, these two were knit using, oops, these two were originally uh, used for baby projects, and then this one was left over from a different hat. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the hat turned out. Designing was quite a bit of fun. Typing up the pattern was quite a bit of work. It's currently being tested through Ravelry. There's a group called Testing Pool, and I'm so thankful that uh, people actually volunteered to use their precious knitting time to help me test this hat and knit it up. So I'm incredibly thankful and grateful for that. And I'm really excited to see how it kind of where it goes, how it turns out. So this was one of the announcements. And I guess kind of leading right into the second one is so this is called the Pacific Crest hat. And that's because I'm actually going to be hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And the Pacific Crest Trail is a long distance trail. There's these three long distance trails in the US and the three of them combined form something called the Triple Crown. And this, the Pacific Crest Trail, you may have heard of it uh, from Reese Witherspoon. She starred in a movie called Wild. There's also a corresponding book uh, that was quite famous. And the trail runs from the very south end of California. So like right at the Mexico border. And then you hike up through California through Oregon, through Washington, and you go right to the border with Canada. And before COVID, you could actually cross into Canada, cross into Manning Park, which is only about like an hour and a half, two and a half hour drive from where I am. But right now you'll actually have to touch the border and then uh, hike back. And likely that won't change anytime soon, just with all the border restrictions. So yeah, that whole hike should take me around four to five months. And I'm gonna actually go there with a girlfriend and we're hiking it together. So we're leaving soonish. And this hat is what I'll be taking with me for warmth. And it's incredibly soft and should be hopefully incredibly warm. With hiking, there's, you kind of are supposed to, you're supposed to obsess over the weight of your pack and you should, because uh, the lighter the pack, obviously the, the less hard it'll be on your body and less grueling. This hat does weigh more than like a lightweight hat, but it should be warm and also it's just kind of, you know, nice to have something that has a little bit of meaning in your backpack. So I'm pretty excited to wear this on my hike. We'll see how it endures. And this pattern will probably likely be released uh, mid to late May. Just to give enough time for people to test knit the hat and then for me to update the pattern and put it out on Ravelry. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to have my first pattern out and then also for it to kind of be named after something that I'm gonna attempt that's pretty big and something that I've wanted to do for a while. I originally had actually planned everything for 2020, quit my job, bought all the gear, had a going away party, and then of course, um, COVID happened. And like everyone else, kind of plans went on pause, so, but I'm feeling good. Hopefully this is the year. It's, it's looking good so far, but, you know, try not to get too excited until I'm actually out there. So yeah, those are my two announcements, so didn't really uh, hold on to those for too long. <laughs> um, Speaking of which, though, since I will be hiking, I am actually going to carry yarn with me. I am going to knit uh, socks. There will be a bunch of downtime at the beginning uh, for the first few months while I'm on trail, just because I won't be hiking a heck of a lot because I want my body to adjust slowly. And also I will be in the desert in kind of early, mid-spring and it'll be hot, so we'll be taking siestas and relaxing quite a bit. So for that, I am going to bring this beautiful mud punch yarn, which is uh, self-striping yarn. And I haven't picked a pattern yet, but if you know of a fun pattern, 
please let me know. I'm trying to try out different heels, so I think I'd like to... I want to pick one with a heel that I haven't done. I've only done Afterthought and I think it's called Gusset Heels. I might split this yarn in half and only take half of it with me at the beginning to knit one sock and then kind of mail the sock and then mail myself the other half of the yarn just to save some weight. But I do hate cutting yarn to make it smaller and then you end up with kind of bits and bobs, which I would really like to try to use all my yarn up. Like for instance, with this yarn, now I've got so little that I definitely can't make a project with it, but it just feels like such a shame to throw away this yarn. So I don't quite know yet what the heck I'm gonna do with it, but I'll keep it. It's also kind of memories and stuff and maybe for teaching someone or something like that. So yeah, PCT, that's my PCT plan. And I was able to, moving on here, I was able to finish uh, the little sweater that I chatted about last time. So this is the Petite Net uh, Carl's Cardigan, and it is knit in um, the Fiber Co. Acadia yarn, which is actually two of the three yarns for this. this is, those are the DK weight yarns in this hat. And the third one is um, Madeline Tosh Merino Light. And then I guess I should say that the yarns in here are, there's two Madeline Tosh Merino lights, there's a Hedgehog uh, sock yarn, and a, uh, the last one is, oh goodness, memory is escaping me. Oh, color? Dream in color. Yeah, the last one is Dream in color. I'm incredibly happy with uh, how this turned out. I, Ooh. I'm incredibly happy with how this turned out. The yarn is incredibly soft and drapey. I've kind of done a bit, oops. I did block it once, but I didn't have any of my blocking pins or mats, so I'm going to block it again just to kind of fix um, the edges here. I ended up doing that technique that I did on my knit collage cardigan. I ended up, when I picked up stitches, I tried to pick up more densely at the top and the bottom just to prevent the, um, the band from like falling, I find they tend to fall this like kind of curl in way, inward. And I also knit it very loosely. And I think this is my favorite button band to date. So I'm slowly learning. One modification that I did do is, um, I don't know why I've talked about this with some other people, but petite knit for her buttonholes, she'll say to just kind of like manually separate the yarn and then use some yarn and like kind of like pull apart the button. But instead I'm too lazy to do that. Her reasoning is, is that the buttonhole will slowly grow, which might be true, um, I'm not sure. But I was too lazy to do that, so I did a yarn over, knit two together, so that the buttonhole is actually built into the sweater. And as you can see, I am almost ready to give this little sweater away, which um, I'm excited about. And hopefully the weather will stay a little cooler uh, so the baby can, can wear it. And to match with the sweater, I got, I made a little hat. And this is my first time knitting a uh, Tin Can Knits pattern. And I'm, it was a very great pattern, super well laid out, kind of in contrast to the Petite Knit pattern. Her pattern is just not as detailed and descriptive, whereas the um, Tin Can Knits pattern was very descriptive and clear. I still love petite knit patterns. This is my second one that I've made from her and I will definitely continue to make more. But I think if you're more of a beginner knitter or learning a new technique, uh, I probably would stay away. And it looks like Tin Can Knits is a great kind of alternative to that. So this pattern is their Beloved and it's a bonnet. And I absolutely love knitting it. It was so quick to knit, so much fun to knit. You get to do this eye cord and then you've got this fun little garter stitch and then um, you've got short rows so it's very entertaining and I think super cute so it 
they're actually going to um, my friends who are uh, Ukrainian. It's not quite the Ukrainian flag. It's actually swapped. Um, originally, this was I started this before uh, the war broke out. So I was just planning on doing this, but I thought it'd be kind of cute to have kind of a Ukrainian flag. Almost a Ukrainian flag. I did, I mean, the colors don't match, but I, I thought this color is maybe just a little bit more kind of wearable and uh, versatile. And I just loved the, the mustard. So what I did with this one, which I found helpful, is on Ravelry, I went and sorted the current projects and then chose the ones that were most helpful. And I looked at the top two most helpful and I ended up uh, taking their advice. So one of their advice uh, had to do with how you do um, the rim of the bonnet hat and to kind of make it more like a like the kind of I-cord just had to do with um, slipping those stitches. And the second one, which I thought was genius, is about how you can knit this bonnet hat to use up your scrap yarn. So for instance, she said what you do is you weigh your yarn and then you, since the hat is knit like this, so you just keep knitting and keep um, kind of growing the size of the hat. And then when you hit the halfway mark, or maybe like a little bit before, um, you just then start doing the decreases and you shrink the hat, which I thought was genius. So that's another great way to use up those little kind of stash bits of yarn, because this is how much yarn I have left over. So as you can see, this really didn't use up that much yarn. Um, I think in the future, I'll definitely be kind of looking at that most hopeful. And this is a very popular pattern and I can see why I'm a hundred percent going to make another one of these. And I probably next time I'm going to make it in a variegated wool, just cause I think that could be uh, super cute. So this was knit using a, was this another fiber co yarn? Oh no, this was actually another uh, Juniper Moon Farm. Juniper Moon Farm, yeah. And this is their Patagonia, which is uh, an organic merino. I was curious what makes organic yarn. It's kind of like organic maple syrup. Like what part has to be organic? And it turns out that not organic yarn typically means that the sheep themselves are considered organic. So basically they treat the sheep better. Uh, they only eat, I guess, un... Um, what's the word? Not fertilized. The, uh, pesticides. I guess there's like no pesticides in their food and they have to have so much uh, roaming. I think the sheep have to be considered like USD, uh, like food organic, I'm pretty sure. And they also have an organic textile. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have a bunch of organic, I guess those are what, verification by companies. So it's not only the sheep, but then also how they process the yarn is also organic. So there's less chemicals used, which is kind of nice for a baby sweater. So this yarn though is definitely a lot, a little bit more kind of rustic than the Acadia yarn. This Acadia yarn is so soft and so delicate, drapey, beautiful. I love it. It's also very precious. It's a bit more expensive. Uh, I believe this yarn has silk and alpaca in it, as well as merino, and it's non-super wash, uh, which means it could uh, block or shrink a little bit easier. But this is like gorgeous. Definitely going to knit more in this, and I think it's great for babies just because it's nice and soft on the skin. Um, this yarn is a little bit more scratchy. I did block this, and it still is feeling a bit more rustic. It, it still feels nice though. I'd compare this more to like a Noro yarn where he just, it's just kind of got that a little bit more of a rustic feel. I think like this one, I think pretty sure has like silk in it. And I think when you add those like really cozy fibers, it can make a pretty big difference. This one is also a little bit more drapey and this one is just a little bit more stiff. But I'm still happy with the yarn. I'm still excited about it. And I'll definitely be knitting probably, since I've only got one skein, uh, another baby sweater with it. I also am really happy with the color. I think this is called mustard. Oh, it's called acorn. It's kind of this kind of mustardy 
browny yellow, which I think is quite wearable and also would look like it goes well with this blue. I think it would look really cute uh, with jeans uh, for a little baby. So I've just got to sew the buttons on and then this and block it one more time. And then this is going to be considered done. So as you can see, I finished four projects in the last month, uh, which I'm excited about. One thing that did happen though, so I went to the yarn store to buy this yarn and I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't buy any other yarn that wasn't, I wanted to use up my stash, but unfortunately I did buy more yarn. And I got one of these bags to store it in. So this is actually um, a Hohi & Co bag. It's my first one. I just, I signed up to her mailing list to get when she does update her shop and I saw this bag and I just fell in love with it. I got this bag to sit on the couch for my current project so that it kind of, before I just kind of had all the yarn sitting on our like table and it would just kind of get scattered and sometimes our dog Goose would grab a little bit of it and kind of eat it which I didn't want her also to eat yarn because it might tangle up in there. So I saw this and my husband actually got it for me as a birthday gift and I'm so excited. So I didn't know this at the time because this I got this actually the second time that I tried to get one of her bags. Her bags sell out within minutes. And the first time I got this bag, but actually in cream in my in the shopping cart. And then I clicked... I had to do something for PayPal, and by the time I finished um, registering for PayPal, the bag had already been sold. So this time I was completely ready. PayPal was all set up. So if you are thinking about buying one of her bags and are kind of like hanging on the outskirts there, uh, before the update, make sure that you have your PayPal set up so that you can, right at the time, there's actually a little timer that times down on her website. As soon as that time timer stops, refresh the page, Put that thing in the cart uh, and click buy. <laughs> so I'm absolutely in love with this bag. It is really well made. It's all leather. It's I believe they're all handmade in Argentina. So I got this kind of beautiful green paired with the brown. I love this shade of green. I want to see it's like army green. It's very natural looking. And it comes in these little, I think they're linen, it comes in this linen bag. And it shipped, I want to say it almost shipped and arrived within a week. So this bag, which I'll definitely be uh, reusing for something else. And as you can see, so I've currently actually got a sweater project in here. And it, there's room, there's quite a bit of room. This sweater project only requires two skeins of wool, so I'll, uh, I think when I have a bigger project though, I think it'll fit, or if I have multiple projects, which is more than likely what will happen, uh, they will all fit. As you can see too, it's pretty wide, and the thing I really liked about this is that it stands up on its own. This was the reason why I got uh, this style of bag. She has a couple different styles, and it's incredibly, I mean, you can just feel the quality in it. There's all this like stitching and uh, the leather is thick and cozy, and as you can see, it kind of drapes. And there's a, a pocket on the inside, which I can put, I'll probably put like buttons or like my little scissors, measuring tape, things like that in there to keep that organized. And yeah, I'm just overall super excited uh, to have this. And I've been kind of watching her bags for a while. So I'm very happy. And as you can see, it's got a pretty big, uh, big base. And I almost think like, it almost looks nice as a purse too, right? Like <laughs> it fits, I don't know if you can see this, but it fits over the arm and I've got some space here. And also I'm short, but I can hold it down and it doesn't nearly, uh, you probably can't see this actually, but it doesn't nearly um, hit the floor. So I think it'll be a great project bag. It is open on the top, which is, um, I mean, this is suede, so I wouldn't take it out when it was raining anyways, I guess, but 
definitely won't be taking it out when it's raining just because it is open on the top. I do live in Vancouver, which is a very rainy city. But my main reason for having this is actually just to for moving yarn throughout the apartment and keeping all my projects um, looped up. So I'm excited and very happy with the purchase. Definitely satisfied. So what's in the bag? So this is yarn that I did a bit of an impulse purchase on that I really should not have gotten, but I'm very happy I did. So I got cones. I always seen um, Knitting Tradition. She tends to have all these cones. I don't know if it's more of like a European thing that you buy yarns on cones, but I saw these cones and I just fell in love with the color. So this, there's all these bright colors. There's like a hot pink, a bright blue, uh, beautiful purple. And this yarn is from Europe. So it's from Paris, I believe. It is a BFL nylon mohair blend. And one thing that I was a little surprised about is the mohair. I didn't anticipate this, but you know how mohair, it's typically very thin, like a lace weight yarn. I want to say they almost spun together the like mohair with uh, maybe like a DK or a fingering weight um, BFL nylon blend. So they just actually spun those two together um, to put them together, which it does separate a teeny bit as I knit it. I've gotten much better uh, with how I hold the yarn. It's actually teaching me to knit looser because if you kind of like, if you're gripping the yarn, it can, as you pull, it'll actually, I don't know if you can see this, probably not, but it'll actually separate it more based on like, if you're kind of gripping the yarn, which I've never had that problem because most of the time, um, all the yarn is, I guess, like, it's the same, uh, the content is evenly distributed throughout all the fiber so that when you wind it, it's, like, um, blended, whereas this is, like, I think actually taking two different yarns and blending them, uh, winding them together, like a lace weight yarn with a fingering weight yarn, like here. I don't know if you can see that. So that was a bit of a learning curve with this yarn. Unfortunately, this yarn has no markings on it. I have no idea what brand it is. I'll call the yarn store and see. I went to a new yarn store in Vancouver. I went to Wet Coast Wools. They were so helpful in there. That's actually where I got the yarn for this hat. I had a great experience and I'm definitely gonna go back and I do wanna go back and show them my, my sweater once I finished it. So the yarn itself, one nice thing about having it all like the nylon, sorry, the wool, the BFL with the mohair is rather than having to buy two separate skeins, you only have to buy one. So I, it was a lot more economical. And also since they're on cones, you I ended up buying two, which is 400 grams of yarn. Where's the other one? And uh, which should be uh, more than enough. So you can see that's how much uh, progress I've made, which is a lot. It's been fun working with yarn on co cones. Uh, I just put the cone down on the floor and then when I need more yarn, I just pull up and it easily comes off and uh, it doesn't spin around or knock itself over too much. So overall knitting with a cone has been a positive, positive experience. I wouldn't, they offer to rewind it, but um, I like, I like using the cones. And for this project, I ended up casting on the Jesse May, oops, cozy classic raglan which is a sweater that I've been admiring for a while I've actually been wanting to knit one of Jesse Maid's designs so this felt like just the perfect opportunity so like I said I got uh, 400 grams which it looks like this should be more than enough wool so this is how much I have left and I've just gotten to the point in the pattern where she says that you can uh, start the ribbing I was lucky that I got to use my little tiny um, Chiagu. I got the little mini set, which comes like in this little red pouch. I think I've talked about it before. And then uh, they're interchangeable, but they're like three or two inch needles. And so you can do small circumference items. And it was a joy to get to knit uh, the neckline with these needles. I just feel like I'm such a speed demon. 
with the tiny needles. There's just no magic loop, so you can just go round and round and round. I would recommend them. They are, one thing I did struggle with though is finding them awkward, just because the needles are so short. Right now, this is the three inch, so this is actually the longer tip. So typically when I knit socks, I do the two inch ones. And those I just found, I just had to get used to not being able to put my um, outer fingers actually on the needles as I knit. So with this pattern, I ended up making a gauge swatch, which, you know, pat on the back, good job. And I did something I had never done before, which is actually measure the gauge swatch for and after blocking. And that way I have an idea of how much the sweater is gonna change. So when I'm trying it on, I can see whether it's gonna expand or not. And for some reason, the gauge actually didn't change before and after blocking. So although I did a good job of measuring it, it's not, it didn't change. I almost got gauge. In fact, I like to say I got gauge, which I'm excited about. I got gauge width wise. I am one, I think one stitch uh, more dense than she is, which means that my sweater will be shorter. So I'll probably use up more wool to get the same length, but that was exciting. So making progress with um, remembering A, making a gauge swatch, and then B, actually measuring it before and after blocking. But I was excited that it all worked so I didn't have to change any needle size or anything with casting on for the sweater. And I just, just enjoy knitting this and just could not stop, which is why I made so much progress in this last month. So another thing that was interesting is you do do a tubular cast on for the top. But something that I hadn't done before is you, first you actually, in a scrap piece of yarn, you cast on and then you, um, with that cast on edge, you actually then grab your actual color and you knit into those stitches that you had in your cast on on the needle. And then, you begin doing the tubular cast on, which is very different. Like I had done the one, I think it's called the Italian. It's Italian or German uh, to actually cast on the original tubular. And then you do the setup rows where you basically, you want to puff up, um, you want to stick some yarn in here to kind of like cause the puff so that it like thicks, it gets thick. And then it looks like that at the top. So you kind of have this little tiny bit of um, bulk. And so you, and you can do, different numbers of rows to kind of like stuff more yarn in there and like puff it out. So this one did three, whereas typically I only do two, which is where you like knit one and then you like slip one with the yarn and knit and slip. And that way you're like separating the purl and the knit stitches. And then eventually you go back together and that's what kind of creates that kind of rounded curved, pretty, pretty edge. That was fun though, to try out a new way to do the tubular cast on. In terms of preferences, Honestly, I think I could go either way and be happy. Felt pretty neutral about it. Something else that was different with the sweater is you do lifted left and right increases, which I hadn't even heard of until now. They they went really well. It's just kind of fun to learn learn something new. I would say they are a bit more flat and a bit more um, uh, like less, they're almost closer to the the uh, row that you're doing the increases away from. So I would say they like are almost more snug. That would be my first impressions. I really like the lifted increases and I think they work really well for a raglan. I was gonna actually try this on just to show you how much progress I've made. So I didn't realize it, but this sweater is originally designed to be cropped. So I'm happy that I probably have enough wool that I can easily uh, extend the body. The pattern itself is incredibly detailed. So it is a bit more of an expensive pattern, but the length and the different amount of modifications that you can do is incredible. So she really put a lot of time and effort into it. She also talks about how you can make this into a fade, uh, different, um, uh, sorry, different, uh, decreases that you can do for the body, different yarns you can hold together. So typically this is actually, I have the mohair held together already wound with the fingering, but you can, so this is like, I think a DK, but you could just knit the DK or you can do 
the fingering uh, with the mohair, and she talks about how to do that. There are also short rows, and I, I've been following the pattern exactly as is. And I think the short rows really turned out. I kind of scarred myself, as you know, with the uh, petite knit balloon sweater where I decided to kind of do my own plan for the short rows and it did not work out. So I've been following the pattern exactly. And I'm super happy with the way it fits. So I, I did the size, which should um, give me the right amount of negative ease. And as you can see, uh, it's actually pretty loose. Actually, I, I feel like maybe I should just sit. One thing though is like this is where my belly button is and I typically wear more mid-rise pants so I am going to probably extend the pattern and I am at the part where she says to start the ribbing but I think I'm going to start it maybe give myself I'd say I'm probably going to knit almost right to my to my pants because that way I like for the actual belt loops to be covered by a sweater that way when you're like reaching up um the sweater won't really hopefully won't show any midriff I'm not a big fan of um although I always be wearing a shirt underneath the sweater so probably not a problem but as you can see the sweater fits pretty well so I think once these kind of tuck in there is a teeny bit of extra fabric at kind of the base of my neck Actually, I think it might not be here right now, so that's good. I'm super happy with it. It's uh, definitely can see why people love this pattern. And it's been fun. I typically, most of the sweaters I've done so far are just like this stockinette, which was, it was a lot of fun when I was doing the increases and it felt like I was kind of watching the sweater grow. But doing, when I just do this round and round, I was getting a little bit Board. It's great though while watching TV or when I just really don't want to think, but I think I might cast on another project that is just a little bit more involved. You know, like this hat, what was so fun about it is just all the different, you're kind of like always doing something new. There's quite a bit of texture to it. Whereas, you know, when you're knitting stockinette, you're just going round and round and round, which it, it's fun, it has, a, it has a place and I enjoy it. But I think I do need like two projects. One that's more kind of relaxing, enjoyable, and one that's maybe just like a little bit testing the edges. But yeah, it was a bit, I didn't want to buy more wool. I told my promise myself I would buy more wool, but I'm very happy with the color and how this is turning out. And I think it's gonna be a very wearable sweater. And because I did get the yarn on the cone, it actually wasn't horribly expensive. It wasn't um, too bad. I'm also interested to see how the nylon in the wool will play out as well as uh, the fact that it's BFL. I've knit a lot of merino, but I've just recently kind of wanted to try knitting more BFL. Get this one. Cool. Okay, so let me just put this away. One thing that I also, there was, I noticed a post on Instagram from uh, Lolo, Lolo Bean Yarn Company. She had this pattern that she um, was promoting that she dyed some special uh, orange yarn with. And it was a pattern specifically built for pooling, which I hadn't seen before. And it's just beautiful. So what pooling is, is where um, a portion of the wool is, like I think it was 20% of the wool is all dyed one color in one section. And then the rest of the yarn is a contrast color. So this is the pattern. So this is just gorgeous. So the orange would be 80% of the wool and then the white is 20% of the wool. And these are actually patterns that are specifically designed for these pooling yarns, which is something I hadn't seen before or even thought of. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. So this is the Little Loops by uh, Annie, what's her, um, Annie, sorry, one second here. Just gotta let the website load. Annie Baker Designs. And of course, as soon as I, here's the white one, let me just show you. So this is, she dyed two different color colorways. So it was the, the, orange with the white and then there's like the white with like a little bit of orange it's just beautiful so of course as soon as I 
you know, noticed this new thing called pooling. It started to pop up. So originally, uh, last episode, I had those Curio socks and they were knit uh, using this like Chasing Yarns uh, Texas yarn, which renamed to uh, Bear, ba- Baker, Baker Yarns. And it turns out, or Barker, sorry, Barker Yarns. She actually did a whole collection. So of course, right after I saw that one, I just came across uh, her collection of these like pooling specific patterns. And just look at that. So this is a cardigan. It's just beautiful. Let me go to the next. I think I can just tap it. It goes to the next one. It's just gorgeous. So I guess you do something specific when you get to those like pooling parts. And she has a bunch of patterns. So that was a sweater. This is like a shawl. And I would bet that, so since she does dye her own wool, I'd bet that you can also get her wool. I think the Lolo Bean yarn wool unfortunately sold out really quick, but um, this might be an alternative option for finding that pooling yarn. And you can uh, knit one of those shawls or um, one of her patterns, one of the Barker wool patterns. I definitely want to try a pooling yarn pattern. I think I'm not much of a shawl wearer, unfortunately, even though it's just so pretty. So that was something new that I discovered about knitting in the last month. And one thing that I was going to do, so I talked about how I'm going to cast on for the socks. Well, I won't cast on yet, but I'm going to bring this on my PCT trip. And I am with the testing call for my hats. Unfortunately, no one uh, was knitting the child size or the, or the baby size, actually. But since I already knit the baby size, I'm going to knit up the child size. And I grabbed um, more of my yarns to all put together. So I'm going to put these four, uh, these four fingering yarns together to form another hat, another PCT hat. So that'll be my kind of next little projects before to get to you before I head out on my trip. I likely won't be able to finish my sweater before I go, but that's okay. Um, I'll get back to it. And this is almost actually, I just thought about this. It's kind of like an Easter hat. So kind of very fitting that I'll cast this on during Easter. So hope you have an awesome Easter. Thanks so much for tuning in and for listening. And please let me know if you have any sock patterns that I should try out uh, on the PCT. So. Oh, one thing I did want to mention with the PCT is that I will continue to do this podcast. My plan is to like knit as I hike, as well as try to stop at any yarn stores as I kind of move throughout the U.S. that I can. So I'll be kind of giving updates on how the knitting and yarn stores are going. And then, of course, actually how my hike is going as well. So yeah, thanks so much. Uh, it's fun to chat with you again and hope all is well. Bye.